What's up, what's up? It's time for Done Way Past Funny. With your host, Sugar Ray. And G.D. Fenderson. Join us as we take a look back at the first time comedians took the stage with this week's guest, Tom Myers. It's time to get down and get dope with Done Way Past Funny. Hi, welcome to Way, Done Way Past Funny. This is G.D. Fenderson. Um, Sons. My uh, co-host, Sugar Ray, he's running late. When he gets here, we'll just plug him in. Uh, but I do have my good friend and our guest this week, Tom Myers. Uh, Tom, yeah, do doesn't you... your co-host know that my time is valuable, or I think it is anyway? No one else does, but... Well, I, I should have mentioned that my co-host is black, so he's on CPT. <laughs> he's been late for a number of these shows. And the fact, and the only reason why people don't know is because I edit this later. And so usually I can put him there on time, but I, I, I'm not doing it this time. No. That's what that's what living in that's what living in Carroll County gets you. When you go <laughs> ahead, all that stuff just starts infiltrating your head. I mean, I live in Harford County, so like I'm surprised that I haven't said it first. <laughs> well, Harford County is one um, support animal away from Carroll County, I think. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do this joke currently in my act where I say, you know, I do I go on stage, or I perform a few times a week, and then I go out and I live my normal life. Basically, I'm like Seinfeld, but with herpes. <laughs> um, only joking, chlamydia. <laughs> <laughs> and then I say, because, I mean, I live in kind of a rural slash suburban area. So uh, I'm still like Seinfeld in that I, too, have a crazy, wacky neighbor who, when he gets flustered, yells the N word. So I mean, it's, it, it all it all ties together. <laughs> now, I I want to make uh, something. Oh, let's see. Well, let the people know uh, a little bit about yourself, like how long you've been doing comedy, uh, things like that. Uh, or did we do that already? Did we do that already? I can't remember because we were talking a little bit beforehand. But you've been doing comedy for over 20 years. Way, way too fucking long. Uh, you just reminded me it was more than 20 years. So uh, I uh, started the first time I took the stage was at my uh, I was auditioning for my uh, senior high school talent show. And I was the only act that didn't make it in. So that was, <laughs> that was early on. I, I was being told, you know what? Life sucks. And then, uh, but no, I started, uh, I, I, I started doing open mics at the, at the coffee house that was located on the campus where I went to school, Goucher college. Uh, I would go on, like in between like poets and musicians, it was actually a pretty, it was actually a pretty chill uh, atmosphere. So I did that, and then that uh, parlayed itself into um, like showcases during uh, alumni and parents' weekend talent shows. Um, that led to theater work, uh, plays, my own radio show on Goucher's uh, uh, student-run radio station. It was like one of the earliest internet stations to pop up, strictly internet stations. So we were doing, basically we were doing podcasting before the term podcasting was, uh, it, it, it existed. Now, when was your radio show? Because that my I did a radio show back in 90, 98 uh, on uh, the internet. It was uh, 03 to 06. Oh, okay. really? that's what I did. It was in 2006. So I think the term podcast came about like in the late aughts. How do you say that? Like the late. Okay. He's the first decade of the, of the millennium. Yeah. Cause I, mine was just a, actually I had a radio station that I ran from my house in 2009 in 1998. And it actually ran 24 hours. And, yeah, it was a 24-hour station, and I was only live 
in the evenings because I couldn't be there all the time. I was working during the daytime. And so I had I had this huge music library of local artists. Only only played local artists. Uh, right. Unsigned, and so unsigned local artists, and I had like this huge library. And these I had two uh CD players, 200 C 200 disc CD players. Uh -huh. And and every and each show was on a one hour disc. And so it was just continuous. And I would just switch, you know, it was I guess it was before it's time, I guess, because now you don't have to do that much work to do that, to do the same thing. Well, I mean, around, I think in the area where you, where I live, and I think you can attest to this, like basically your neighbor who plays the banjo qualifies as an unsigned artist. But <laughs> and, you know, that's the same neighbor of mine who yells out the n-word when he gets flustered so he's already he's been canceled so we can't play his <laughs> anymore i did just look it up the term uh podcasting is attributed to a writer named ben hammersley from uh and it was it was a columnist for the guardian in the uk it was uh first used in uh september of 2004 so wow. you and i can say we've both done uh, podcasting before it was called podcasting. Yes, yes. We um, are we are the pioneers. And speaking of which, I know that, that the premise of the show for people who will eventually see this is that we look at the first time that people took the stage. The thing is, with some of the comedians who have been doing this for a while, like in your case, the first time you took the stage was not convenient. It, it wasn't like now where everybody has a phone and everybody can record almost everything they do. Back right. then, recording a set was a luxury. Yeah. It yeah. really was a luxury. I mean, even if you just wanted an audio, just think, of, uh, just young people, think of this. Even if you just wanted an audio version of your set, you had to have a cassette recorder. Okay. You yeah. had to have a, a device. Oh my gosh! I actually have a cassette recorder. I, I I have the ones I have the ones that I used to do audio recordings of my very first sets. Yeah. I have those. Like I, I would bring those and I would go ahead and set them. Like those, that thing has been probably to like hundreds of different uh, venues with me and has caught. Like if if people, go, holy shit! What the I'm, fuck? I'm sorry. I had to do this. I I, I needed to do this. I. Okay. Do you not know how to get up off your chair and and? I thought I could reach it. <laughs> All right. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> just to, just just to update everybody, just to update every everybody who's listening right now. GD is now paralyzed, <laughs> and I've been since I've been laughing my ass off. I only partially feel like a dick right now. So that's. All right, that's okay. <laughs> Actually, I, I thought I could reach this. I wanted to show the youngsters. What oh I'm my about. god, that's yes. like <laughs> yes, that's why my I'm... elementary school used to use shit yeah. like that. And, and see the dust, <laughs> see the dust that's on it. <laughs> oh god. Right, so, and and there you go. Inside, youngsters, uh, where's eject? A cassette. <laughs> Yeah. Oh man. Yes. And What's uh, that, Maxell? Oh yes, this is a Maxell cassette. Max this is a, a, like, I, can, cassette. I can spot a Maxell from ninety yards. Yes. But no, that, it's it's amazing because like that I, I used to just carry a cassette recorder everywhere with me and I used to bring like several different uh cassette tapes with me, especially if I if I didn't feel like uh you know going home or changing any you know just to go ahead and hit different venues or if i thought i was going to run out of tape yeah I, I would always have a couple uh spares with me like if to some of the venues i've been if cassette recorders could catch stds i'm sure mine would be like it, it would be on its last legs right now <laughs> it may very well be dead because i haven't used it in a while well uh I forgot to do this. No sweat. Oh, there we go. I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I am, I am a novice at this. I mean, I, I, <laughs> there we go. There. I have your show 
one of Good, the shows yeah. anyway. Tom Myers versus the rest of the world on there. So I'll go ahead and do my punchline about my tape recorder having a sexually transmitted disease again, and then you can laugh your ass off instead of just that awkward silence that we heard, which is usually what comes from. My... <laughs> okay, so I can get over it. I'm surprised. In fact, my tape recorder is probably dead now, and I just don't know it. <laughs> But on phone. Now, I am going to uh, the set up the first. I'm going to set up your clip. We All have right. we have divided it into two sections. I think it's like a six minute clip or something. But we got it into two parts. And if you don't mind setting it up, if you remember which one it is, it's from the one from the improv. Yes, the uh, the from the DC improv. Now, yes. I first started in 2001. And for the reasons GD uh, mentioned, um, you know, like I said, video recorders, like they weren't really prevalent when uh, when I got started. So this, my first set was in 2001. This is from early 2006, February of 2006. And this was professionally done by a DC comic uh, named Joe Dealey who that was his thing. He would go ahead and professionally record you. And then uh, he, you'd go ahead and pay him like 20 bucks or something for the, uh, for the DVD of your set, which, I mean, that was still like a, a substantial amount of money. Then this is like early like 2006 or something, or at least for, you know, then starting out and struggling comics such as uh, myself. So that's the source of this video. We have to be a big shout out to, uh, uh, Joe Dealey, uh, he's doing he's doing well. Last time I checked, hope he's hope he's still doing okay. If you're listening out there, love you, okay. Joey. Okay, now Sugar Ray has arrived. I'm going to bring him in. All right. Um, hey, what's up, Sugar Ray? Uh, Ray, this is Tom. Tom Ray. How's it going? Doing, good, good, good. Doing all right. Uh. Are you in the back of a patrol car? No, no I'm actually uh, Uber and DoorDash, so I can finish doing this. Are you, are you, when you're delivering DoorDash right now? I mean, not DoorDash. <laughs> <laughs> not, not jeans. You're delivering food right now? So you could actually, like, knock on the door and get somebody's face on the show and... Uh, Never mind. I wouldn't ask you to do that. That would be very, very <laughs> weird. They'll be like, oh, you record me. He looks like he's doing his impression of Kanye West during that Chris Cuomo interview. <laughs> Didn't see it. Oh. Now I okay. So we're about to do. We're gonna hit. We're gonna start the clip. It's uh. Were you able to hear us, Ray, while we were talking? While you were waiting to get on? Okay, we're oh, about yeah, to start yeah, Tom's. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, okay. Right. So, okay. So, we're going to start the clip real quick. Here we go. Oh, just FYI, our mics will be off, Tom. So, if you try to talk to us, we won't hear you for like two minutes until the video's over. Okay. All right. I'm just getting my, get my headphones in here. here. All right, cool. Tom Myers. How's everyone doing tonight? Great, glad to hear it. Uh, the improv. Wow. Am I nervous? No. Reason I'm not nervous is because I'm performing in front of three feet of bulletproof plexiglass. That's in case Dick Cheney decides to show up tonight. I'm protected. Oh, there he is. Hi, Mr. Vice President. Come on back up here, Harry. You'll be safe up here. There's plenty of room backstage. Now, but I've been doing comedy for about four years now. And uh, I've been to some interesting places. I've been in, I was in Georgia last summer. Anyone been to Georgia? The Georgia State Legislature is in the house tonight. Wow. If no one had applauded, I'd still be going on with this bit. Georgia has some very interesting roadwork signs. These roadwork signs consist of, on the left side of the sign, 
is a child's smiling face. Oh. And to the right of that, it says, My daddy works here. Please slow down. Uh, My daddy works here. Okay. My daddy works here. It's pretty presumptuous, this little brat, isn't it? <laughs> you ever seen these road crew guys? The last thing they do is work. <laughs> That sign should say, My daddy stands around all day tying up traffic so he can look for really attractive women so he can talk to his buddies about how nice her titties look and how he'd like to eat his lunch right between her legs. Please slow down. Now oh, they're being honest, I'll slow down. Fuck, if I saw a sign like that, I'd want to pull up next to those guys, roll down my window. Hey, are they hiring where you work? <laughs> I'm amazed at like how thin I looked. Like, because <laughs> I no, because I I look at myself when I'm in the shower every morning, just you no, know, not on purpose, and like it's I'm now demoralized <laughs> just watching that. <laughs> I mean, the, the the material's gotten better over over the years, but you know, it's just I I want to go back to that physique. <laughs> well, um, uh, we did, I'm going to mention anyway, you recently just celebrated your 4,000th day. I mentioned because you put it on Facebook. If you hadn't put right. it on, out there, I wouldn't mention it just out of the blue. Right. But you just celebrated, well, congratulations, you just celebrated your 4,000th day of sobriety. Yeah, is, yeah. It's is been uh... 10 years and 10.9 years. Just about yeah, half. That's... Just about half of your career sober. Yeah. Well. Comedy. Career. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. I uh, I started drinking when I was nineteen, and I quit when I was twenty eight. And I think in that clip, I was probably I was probably twenty three. So yeah, I mean, I've been been off the booze since uh, New Year's Eve twenty eleven. So uh, yeah, that well, was. I... Uh, the, the booze accounted for how <laughs> how warped that bit was. <laughs> that, that's, that we, that's, that's what that I was going to ask you because <laughs> because you have the uh, you have the privilege of having done your comedy long enough where you have the the uh, I was going to say your BS set and your AS set your before sobriety set and your after and post sobriety post sobriety yeah. Yeah. yeah, your BS and PS. Um, for well, if post post sobriety, yeah, I guess it is. But I'm I'm currently so okay. I'm so currently sober because you're yeah. still. They say once you're like, once you're an addict, you're always an addict. You're never an ex addict or a former addict. Like that's the thing. You're all like if I if I were to start drinking again, uh, I would go ahead and pick off as if I'd never stopped drinking, which I was already right. doing a lot of. Uh, at that time. And like, I've joked about my drinking and, and getting sober in my act. So like, it's, it's no big thing. Like I've done uh, a few, I've done a few roasts and roast battles and things like that. And interestingly enough, that has, of all things, that has never come up. Like they'll go ahead and mention some, some other shit that's below the belt, but you know, never that the, never the fact that I was a, uh, a booze hound, uh, a drunk or anything like that. And now, I'm, I mentioned because, like I said, this set, this is the early set we have of you, and this was also back when you were. Well, did you, you did you, well, did you ever go on the stage drunk, or did you just have enough to take the edge off? Um, I, 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 I was probably, I was probably hammered then, <laughs> because <laughs> it, it was the DC Improv. Right. I was nervous as fuck. And the guy who was introducing me is Rob Cantrell. I think he was from uh, lat one of the comics from Last Comic Standing. I think he may have been like a winner that year. Um, so it was like, okay, this is it's a big venue, my first time there. And if memory serves correctly, my cousin, who used to be a trial lawyer, who lived in D.C., lived... Like I was able, it was like a, a 15 minute walk to the club. 
So that's that's what I did. I went ahead and just walked from her place to the DC Improv, so I could drink no problem, and not have to now, worry about you know driving. Now the DC back back then was that DC was that particular show was that a sign up or or did the well back then did they even email shows in advance or were they still unsophisticated enough that you just showed up and sign up? No, that was, I don't think they've ever done the show up sign up. They've never done like a show up and go up type thing. Oh, okay. Uh, it's always billed as like sort of a, it, it wasn't an open mic. It was a, a booked thing. Uh, how I got on that show was I was contacted by a comedian by the name of Ryan Connor. He used to be a DC guy. I think now he's in New York City or something like that. So he was the one who got me uh, on that particular showcase. So, uh, yeah, that was how that was how all that came about. All right, cool. Now, the now, how dare anybody take up my space? It, I feel the Do same. Do not way. know who the fuck I am. <laughs> I feel the same way. That's uh, that's why I'm a terrible host. <laughs> I, gotta, I don't want to get <laughs> who's a damn headliner taking up my time as a host. <laughs> Damn headliners think they're special mm. just because they're last. If they were really good, they'd be warming the crowd up for me. <laughs> <laughs> now, I noticed that, well, again, because I know you, you don't go around sticking your face in the audience anymore. Back then, you 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 crawled on the floor a few times. Well, did you know the people to your off to the stage that you stuck your face, you know, when you... I mean, I think part of that was just a mechanism that I would I would do to go ahead and well, that that was that was a method of just seeing who was in the audience because you know you're up on a stage like that the lights are right in your face you can see right. the front row okay and and that's it and I was still pretty like in your face and and confrontational then somewhat controversial but now I'm just you know, it's it's weird. I was 23 in that clip. I'll be 40 uh, this coming January 29th, whenever this thing happens. It may, I may already be 40 by the time this thing comes out. So, you know, I'm, I'm sort of, I don't really get in your face, like in the uh, literal sense, just the, the jokes I do now it's pretty like it's it's confrontational in your face just in just in that way the metaphorical way one of the things i i like about you is that you're irreverent to the point where i i, I you don't give a fuck and, and and i mean that in the nicest way uh i mean that in a way that like okay comedy is very clickish okay comedy is very yeah. clickish and people get their favorites and they, they're the ones they work with, okay? Um, so they're like people who will like not work with me even for money. You don't give a fuck who you work with. It's about being there, you know? I, I don't wanna, I don't, I don't wanna, it's a, uh, how did I? Oh, like I'll say it, like younger, young comedians. It's like, uh, uh, they they're focusing on getting on stage as opposed to bringing something to the stage. And yeah, yeah, they want to go ahead and and basically rant about stuff and just don't have they they don't have punchlines. And I I see this now with comics on like some Zoom shows that I do. Like they'll just go ahead and keep going on this long monologue. And I think it was uh. Like, Lenny Bruce said something. I think it was Lenny Bruce said something. You have to have a laugh like every 15 seconds. I mean, yes. like, even like I'm not at that point. Um, but, uh, but yeah, it's just if they don't, they, they end up turning off a crowd uh, yeah. easily, easily when, when they when they do that. It's like I've, I've done, I, I've, I've run shows on Zoom. I still do. And, er, and every once in a while, you know, you'll get, like the comic who does this line, like you've heard, I went when they get the wrap out up signs. Like, 
oh, do I have time to tell one more joke? And I'm thinking to myself, I didn't tell any for five minutes. So <laughs> fuck no. <laughs> <You're> not gonna... <laughs> All right, Ray is back. Now, I, I really did like, I love the, 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 the Georgia driver work sign joke. That's, yeah, that's, um, yeah, accurate. And, and I'm misplacing myself. It's accurate, but it's also, it's like, it's very, very funny. Um, now, okay. I was talking to, a, a, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ray. I had no clues what the hell's going on, ladies and gentlemen. So, uh, okay. My two cents would be crazy as hell. All right. Uh, I was talking to a young comedian the other night and he was telling me how he has to have a drink to perform. And now I perform sober and it's not because I have an issue with alcohol. It's just that I know what I'm like when I've had a few drinks and it's not the same person that you would see after a few drinks. And the person who after the person I become after a few drinks, I don't want on stage. <laughs> right. Yeah. But I mean, everybody's different though. I mean, it's like I used to be able to need a few drinks or just go on absolutely shit hammer. It just depends on the venue, on the circumstances. If I went ahead and looked at an audience and prejudge them, um, like I would have anywhere from, you know, two or three beers to I think one night I drank like seven beers, a few shots of whiskey. And then even like during and after my set, mm -hmm. audience members would just buy me shots of like, like tequila and vodka, whiskey or whatever. And then I'd be drinking, I'd be drinking more on top of that. So I was like, you know, everybody's, everybody's different. Everybody has their own way in which you know, they operate, which they need, they need a, a crutch to function. And, uh, and w when you quit, obviously I changed the dynamic a lot. I heard it was a, a comedian out of Houston. This is back in the like the eighties or nineties. Um, uh, one of the, uh, the Bill Hicks outlaws of comedy crew. I think it was like Andy Huggins or Jimmy pineapple. One of those guys who said, yeah, when you quit drinking and you know, you're, you're doing stand up. Like your sets for about six months are shit. Like you, you guarantee to bomb like for those six months. And then once that, that six months passes and you start getting, you start getting better and better because you know, you don't have the alcohol in your system uh, that you needed to go on before. Then that's when you know you're on the real road to recovery and you're, you're getting back into the swing of things. And I found, I found that to be true. Because I quit in uh, like New Year's Eve, 2011. So, like late June, early July of 2012, that's when I started to really get back in the swing of things. That's when I really started to be kicking. So, what do you do? So, what do you do now to, I guess, emotionally put yourself in this place to perform as opposed to back then? Um, I mean, I just I'll. Well, at that show we did, uh, at that show we did in Columbia not too long ago. Right. I mean, I I used to once once I quit drinking, I used to you know need to be alone just to gather my thoughts. But now it's like I've been doing this shit for so long that I you know I don't need like I I don't need notes with me all the time. Like I don't need something where I just have an entire list of my list of my jokes there i just i i have enough to where if i you say, okay you're doing four minutes you're doing five minutes you're doing eight you're doing 15 i can go ahead and just pull from that and just keep going i'm relaxed enough to the point where i'm able to do that so just really just like i, like I said everybody's different now i just uh relax and boom i'm going so you don't have to scream at people anymore, right? Well, I noticed in this set that the, the clip, that, actually, did you do any screaming in the first part or am I foreshadowing? Am I? Um, I mean, we was just like, watching. I can't remember if you screamed. There was a raised, there was some a raised voice. Yeah, okay. I think there, I, I know, I know the part you're talking about though. Yes. Okay. That's, that's the next thing then. Yes. 
Hi, I'm G.D. Fenderson, certified forensic humorist and co-host of Dunway Past Funny. You have just watched part one of our interview with Tom Myers, comedian and host of the Tom Myers vs. the Rest of the World podcast. Please join us for parts two and three. And when you come back to join us, bring a friend. In the meantime, if you should happen to see my co-host, Sugar Ray, please do not feed him. Just send them home. He's on both sides of deodorant.